and this test reflex. Uh, okay, uh, uh, like what is the difference between test reflex and test reflex? Uh, after discharge of this test reflex is uh, high intensity, rhythmic, and short. After discharge of flexion reflex is prolonged, long duration compared to stress reflex. Uh, stress reflex is a reflex which is, I've explained earlier, and flexion reflex is like if uh, somebody saw the harmful stimuli, then they will automatically withdraw their hand. So this example of flexion reflex. Uh, so we will see uh, what are difference between after discharge of the stress reflex and the flexion reflex. So in this also he has carried out experiment and as is onset of time and as is sensitive and stimulus. And stimulation is 45 brake shocks at rate of 18 per second. And this you can clearly see uh, above first one is uh, scratch reflex. In scratch reflex you can see that uh, there is sharp increase in intensity after discharge and it it goes down immediately after a few seconds. In case of flexion reflex, uh, you can see there will be increase in the intensity, but it is prolonged compared to scratch reflex. It's, uh, it is lasting more than the scratch reflex. So duration of the flexion reflex after the size is longer compared to scratch reflex. So this is major difference between scratch reflex after discharge and flexion reflex after the start. And then we will see like cross sections and reflex. Uh, it costs, uh, cross in the in the dog reflex of the hind limb, which is a movement of a movement at knee, ankle, and hip is caused by stimulation on contralateral hind limb. Like example, if we uh, stimulate the hind limb of dog, then there will be automatic uh, movement in up, uh, same hand limb but in opposite side. Like it will be crossed to another leg of the dog. So this is known as cross extension. It is crossed from one leg to the another leg. After discharge may be more intense than the other part of discharge and declining from 10 to 15 seconds. And this experiment Sengton had given 20 break stocks at rate of 25 per second. In this picture you can clearly see that after discharge period of the a cross, a cross extension reflex is more. There is maximum increase in the after discharge period of cross extension reflex. Uh, after discharge, so uh, after discharge if continues, then what is mechanism should be there? And there is a uh, mechanism of the inhibition is there which uh, which will stop the after discharge. If after discharge continues, then there will be more generation of action potential and, and there will be more increase in uh, action potential. Due to that, there will be many uh, abnormalities in neuron like uh, epilepsy, those things attack will done because of the overexcitation of neurons. So there is process of inhibition to stop after discharge. So if they, after sometimes if after discharge stop, sorry, after sometimes there is inhibition process is stopped, then again, after discharge will um, manifest, and it is one kind of property of reflex. Thank you. Thank you, Baska. I think there were qu quite quite a detailed account of uh, what happens to the after discharge, not only what's after discharge, but also. Uh, what are the different uh, variations to uh, that happens to after discharge uh, depending on the nature of stimulus which we are giving. So that was quite a lot. Um, so now we can uh, start asking questions. Whoever are having questions, whoever are not understood or whoever want to throw more light into it, you can just uh, uh, talk. So, uh, thank shall we know what is the physiological mechanism involved in uh, that? Um, 
Subhu. Um, sir. Subhu. Yeah. The physiological mechanism behind after discharge, sir. Uh, you mean to um, tell uh, why does after discharge happens or how happens. how it happens? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a question I think we may need to reserve for a little bit of more time and I'm, I'm not sure about the exact answer. Um, Ramesh Babu sir, do you have any um, uh, information uh, about this? Uh, at this point, I could give on uh, uh, one point like uh, uh, there are persons of what is called as a reverberating circuit. Okay, so this reverberating circuit uh, um, uh, even after completion of the stimulus, that uh, because of that reverberating circuit, there will be continuous stimulation happens. It forms like a loop. So the after completion of the initial stimulus, uh, the, because of this reverberating circuit, I, um, I think there is a good diagrams are available for uh, what is exactly reverberating circuit. There will be involvement of many interneurons. So uh, with the help of this interneurons, there will be formation of these new reverberating circuits. Um, through these circuits, uh, there will be continuous discharge of um, uh, signals. It's so. Signal. Yeah, uh, that is responsible for this prolongation of uh, discharge. Okay, that is the know. actually the physiological basis of it. Oh, of it. Okay, okay, right. That was, that was uh, uh, very much right, and uh, it was uh, on the point. So you have a um, uh, set of neuron, two set of neurons. One stimulates the other, other sends back the stimulus to the same thing, and then it uh, keeps continuing, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, presentation is good, very good. Uh, a little bit you can add, like um, at what level uh, it happens. So you're talking about extents or past extents or reflexes, and then uh, after this discharge and all, at what level it happens, so whether it is at the spinal level or whether it is at the brain level. So if you give uh, the cost extents or reflex diagram, and then a reverberating circuit diagrams are available. It will be easy to understand the uh, exact physiological basis of it. So, uh, because you have given examples of epilepsy also, that means it is happening at the level of brain also, isn't it? So, uh, but um, uh, more, uh, more or less, we can see at the level of spinal segments. And uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, particularly in the cost extents or reflex, if you look at, uh, if you step over the town, immediately you withdraw the um, uh, limb where we, which limb we are going to step over, we will draw the limb, there will be flexion, right? On the opposite side, there will be extension. So, uh, there is a good example are available for this. So, uh, this can be included, and otherwise, that presentation is good. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. I, th I think, uh, um, I think we can uh, just, um, uh, pass on the reverberating circuit and uh, where it is occurring right those those uh, pictures can be sent so we will we have a small group i think uh, uh, we will send it into it and also share it with all the um, others yeah. subhu uh, subhu sir does it um, is it fine yes sir yeah mm, right. any 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 other questions from anyone Um, Baska, was there any questions when you were preparing? Was there anything which you couldn't understand? Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> like, sir, in case of this, uh, yeah, there was increase in stimulus, stimulus, like one, two, three, four, six, seven. In seventh, you have given again same stimulus, but uh, after this period of seven stimulus is compared less compared to one. Uh, why that one is like indicated? Like in first ten. 7350, but uh, in seventh one it was a like, little bit less than first one with him. Okay, so so you are talking about the amount of variation, and um, ideally, yeah. this kind of variation is expected whenever you do an experiment, right? You cannot get the same, same response if you keep repeating it. 
so there will be some minor variation the point here is uh, okay you, you had stimulated the intensity at 3000 it was 1432 and then you again reduce it and it has again come down to uh, back to the lower level so these minor variations are expected so uh, there might be multiple reasons okay. for it but uh, during the uh, in the conduction part of it there might be you know, slight decrease in the amount of uh, uh, acetyl choline which is available at that point of time and things like that so uh, so if there is a big variation then that's something which we need to look on but smaller variations are natural even if you take a pen and if you want to point at a dot and if you want to put a dot if you keep repeating it you will never see you will always see that the you don't you are not able to um, strike at the same point again it's always been a slightly different area so so that's a that's a natural variation that comes because of uh, differences um, at the time of stimulus any any other questions i want all the participants to um, try and ask a question it could be uh, it may not be uh, much bigger it could be very very simple question it could be silly question but uh, the primary idea is um, we want to understand what it sherington do that's it so uh, you can uh, always please ask because as we go forward we will be going to very very complex issues so if you do not understand at this point of time what is this then then it might be difficult for us at a later point of time that's all princi sarju areshna rejna any uh, hello any sir um yeah. uh, yes sir um, in different reflexes uh, the after discharge period is different no like in uh, scratch reflex if the intensity is increased then um, more uh, after discharge will be more intense um and in flex uh, flexion reflex it will be prolonged yeah. so uh, it differs in um, the different reflexes yeah why it is so yeah that's 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 a very very uh, important and a very good question yeah. any any lights on that anyone um anyone can uh, try and answer that you know, why should after discharge be different for uh, in different types of reflexes especially in scratch reflex you see that it goes off and then in flexion reflex you see that it's prolonged so why why could that be so as the um, table says the intense to increase the intensity of stimulus there will be increased after discharge yeah uh, so maybe the intensity of stimulus between uh, the three uh, reflexes may be different which is leading to different uh, uh, that may be the reason sir um vas uh, can you just go on to that uh, picture of uh, a uh, scratch and flexion reflex and the you know, stimulus intensity is over there okay um that's it uh, um is any any other information about this uh, stimulus intensity uh, difference between scratch and flexion reflex pascal have you incorporated any uh, data on this no sir not man uh, you have not looked into it okay fine right so so that that normally happens in an experiment but then when sherington has communicated it that there seems to be a difference between scratch reflex and flexion reflex i think we need to accept that the stimulus intensities were all standardized so that uh, uh, he could um, tell that uh, there is a difference in after discharge because when he does experiment he seems to be repeating things many times 
so um i don't think it's just a uh, experimental um error on the side of sherington to have a various stimulus and compare the reflexes um, any any subo any counterpoints to that or any anyone else you can just um throw some light on that just so maybe the size of the muscles of the nerve which is stimulated like it will increase or decrease based on that uh yeah this 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 uh, point is again uh, very similar to what subu sir has uh, told about the stimulus right so he might have got a different response and i think uh, there is always a possibility of that but uh, um but could there be any other valid reasons for this so maybe ref uh, flexion reflex involves a lot of synapses and uh, scratch reflex could involve little uh, like less synapses which is why uh, there is difference between prolongation of time um again again uh, uh, again that needs to be explored but uh, when you say the scratch reflex versus a flexion reflex uh, the um, the stimulus points are the same and the effect or organs are again the leg right so uh, in one the uh, the dog keeps scratching that part in other the dog does it once and then leaves it. right so so uh, that um, uh, we may not be having uh, two different number of synapses over there but that's that's a interesting point because uh, it could be that the synapses are more and so you might be having a different response that might be a possibility but again sir uh, it might be sir intrinsic nature of this reflex like baseline nature of scratch and flexion reflex is like that only yeah, yeah that that that's what sherington can tells it. okay right it's it's a basic intrinsic nature that's what uh, that seems to be the truth okay um mm. i i'd like to throw some point on it this is very closely related to what ramesh babu sir had told about he has given a very very apt example of uh, when do we get this flexion ex reflex and cross extension reflex and he gave uh, the right example of you step on a thorn and you just lift your leg right so when you step on a thorn you are lifting the leg so in order to understand rational's question we need to first go into an understanding of why uh, after discharge is happening in the first place right what is the need for a uh, response to prolong and continue even after the stimulus has stopped all right so when we look at from that point of view basically what i think is the importance of uh, 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 of this after discharges say for example if there is a thorn and we are go and it's going to hit we are going to lift that leg immediately right but if the uh, after discharge is not there what will happen is the leg will again go back to its normal position which means that the thorn hits you lift the leg and again you are going back to the thorn okay right but this needs to be prevented because the source we we may not be having a lot of time to remove ourselves from the source if uh, if we are again and again going and hitting against the thorn so so basically this after discharge my uh, is a protective response that's how when we are when we were young uh, right even a kids when you prick with a pin they will immediately take out their hand uh, right so it's a basically a protective response so when this protective response is there we require the response to be retained until you are uh, getting out of the danger okay right and not to do that you need to keep your arm away right so the purpose of a flexion reflex is to just take it up right and so the after discharge duration might be prolonged if the intensity is higher say for example a small thorn or a bigger thorn if a bigger thorn is there then there is more danger more danger that's how our brain perceives so we might be taking it up right so uh, the purpose of a scratch reflex on the other hand is to remove a source of a noxious stimulus which is there attached to a body right so when it is attached to the body 
um, say for example, you are taking an acid and you're pouring on the skin. That's what they did initially. So the whole idea is to remove it from that part. And to remove it, just doing it once is not going to help. You need to again and again do it. When you're again and again doing it, your arm or your leg is going to go on to opposite movements. So there is going to be a flexion extension, flexion extension. So when this happens, one needs to activate a muscle. At the same time, the muscle has to be inhibited immediately. Then only the opposite muscle group can come and uh, uh, stimulate it right can come and work so scratch reflex is something where say for example it is itching and we keep on repeatedly scratching the day so the purpose of a scratch reflex is going to be for uh, you to have a activation inhibition of a muscle activation inhibition of the opposite muscle and activation inhibition of that muscle so this is going to happen again and again so in that case if the after discharge is going to be prolonged then it might prevent that particular muscle from going to an off phase. So inhibition should be added to it. So that might be the reason why your scratch reflex shows a different profile for an increasing intensity of stimulus rather than a flexion reflex showing a prolonged duration. And I think that might be the reason for that. That's my uh, take on it. If anyone else have uh, any alternate explanation or a counterpoint, you can please give Reshna, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Any, any, um, Mm. Subhu sir, does it seem to be a valid uh, point? Yes, sir. Okay. Ramesh sir, any, any lights on it? Um, the, does it sound fine from your viewpoint? or? Yeah, it's fine. It's, uh, it's good. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I, I also felt the same, actually. Okay. Um, yeah. The purpose of reflex for which it is available there. Mm -hmm. Exactly, you have given the same uh, explanation for that. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, Raji was also telling it the purpose of the two things might be different. She's listening yeah. from yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that explains it. All right. Any any further questions? Okay. Suchi, uh, was that clear, Suchi? Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. Okay, I think that was a very, a very stimulating presentation today. Uh, and if there are no further questions, I would like to uh, uh, conclude the session. Uh, thanks, Baskar. It was very a very detailed explanation of uh, the different experiments and uh, what you had uh, uh, explained it. Also, the data was quite clear. I hope uh, we continue like this and uh, the others are also going to uh, throw some more light on it. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, thanks everyone. Uh, uh, we will be moving on to uh, the next Silliman's lecture. And uh, I think uh, it's uh, Reshna, Suchi and uh, Shrikar. I think you are going to do it, right? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, fine. So please do uh, prepare the presentation and then uh, just do it. Uh, in any case, if you are having any um, doubts uh, while you are preparing for the presentation, you can please always uh, feel free to um, ask that, right? So that we can uh, uh, we can 